Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. So, I have discovered something really new to me and I have been a crafter for 11 years and I have never seen this before. And I need to know, have I just been living under a rock all these years or is this like new for you too? They're called colorful fonts. Have you heard of that term? So I was on Creative Fabrica and I was just searching. We all know that website has a whole bunch of stuff and can be a rabbit hole for you. And I clicked on a tab that said colorful fonts. Let me show you. This entire tab of colorful fonts, I mean, I would love to be able to do fonts that look like this. They are all just so stinking pretty. So the very first one that caught my eye was the spider web font because Spider-Man is one of my favorite superhero characters and I absolutely love this font. So I went and downloaded it, but when I brought it into Desi Cricut Design Space, this was brought up. I downloaded the font, put in my name, and then went black. And I was like, wait, that's not what that picture showed me. So I went back in and I was reading the item description and it says it is not compatible with the Cricut. And I'm like, well then, what am I supposed to do with this? So of course it says also in here, you know, we always download then read later that it says that you could use it for Illustrator, Silhouette and Inkscape. Well, we all know I love me some Inkscape. I also do have a Silhouette Business Edition. So this can work on the Silhouette as well. I'm going to show you how to do it in Inkscape just because that's just what I know and love. Okay, so when you do this, you wanna make sure that your Inkscape is completely closed out because we are gonna be downloading a new font. I've already downloaded this, so I'm not going to do it, but I'll talk you through the steps and they're very easy. Essentially, all you need to do is you need to come up here to download, go into your downloads folder, and then add the new font into your computer system. And then open up a blank window in Inkscape. It's that easy. Now, remember what I said, it doesn't work on Cricut Design Space. So I'm gonna show you how to create your own cuttable clip art that we can use over in Cricut Design Space. Now, this particular file is going to be a print then cut file. So it's not going to be an SVG file that we're gonna be able to cut and layer. Okay, so going over into Inkscape, I am just going to put my name. So all you need to do is go over here to that A and you just wanna insert a text box. And I'm gonna put in anything that I want. My name is exactly what I want to be using for this. Now, if you're doing this for a particular project, put exactly what you want on there. Then when you're done, we just wanna come up here to this arrow tool, click that, and I'm gonna make this bigger. We wanna make sure that this lock is locked because that is going to resize it proportionately. Now, the sizing does not matter here. The bigger, the better, and I'll explain why in a second. When that's done with the text box that you still have checked, I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to click on the font family and I'm just gonna type in the font that I'm looking for. It's gonna be black, that's okay, just press apply. And then all of a sudden you get a colorful font. And that's it, like it's that easy to get a colorful font. Now, I'm sure you're asking yourself, there's no way, this is too good to be true. I can assure you it's not. However, there is workarounds. It's a little bit more of a process, but this freaking font is so dang cute. I think that the process is worth the final product. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring this up and I'm gonna make this bigger. Remember, the larger, the better. You can do one of two things here. The first way I'm gonna show you is going to be the quickest process and the easiest to get done and moving to continue the design process. The second part, which is the part that I would suggest doing, is going to take a little bit of time and it's going to have a little process, but you're gonna have the highest quality images for your projects later. So the first thing, the first way, what you would want to do is you would just want to take a screenshot of this. You want to make sure that the whatever it is that you're using, whatever name or anything like that that you're using, is filling up most of your computer screen. So we have my name and it fills up most of my computer screen. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to command shift four which is taking a screenshot. This little like aiming tool pops up and I'm going to draw a box around the entire name and I'm just gonna let go. I'm gonna let that fall to the side for a second. 
Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Cricut Design Space and I go over here into Upload and then Upload Image. This is my screenshot up here. I'm just gonna drag that into my, into my Design Space. I'm gonna click on Complex and then press Continue. Okay, do not do the Remove Background Tool because the inside of the letter is white. You want to make sure that you don't get rid of that just because it'll cut out later and end up looking really funny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the select and the more options. I'm going to click that little arrow, scroll down a little bit, and then this is going to pop up. I'm going to bump up my color, uh, color tolerance up to about 50%. And then when that's done, I'm just going to click that white and let's zoom on in. And if we go over here into preview cut, you can see that we still have this grays, these grays. So I'm gonna click the grays. I don't want the grays. I only want my actual letter. Okay, we're gonna go back here and we're gonna just unclick that so we can see our actual letters. Okay, and then the only thing I'm missing is the inside portion of this A. If we go over here into preview cut image, you can see I'm missing that, right? So let's go over here and just click that inside portion of the A. Go back to preview cut and now it's there. So we're gonna go over here into apply and continue. Okay, so instead of doing a cut image because we want it to be colorful, right? We're gonna click this print then cut and I'm just gonna rename this and then press upload. Okay, we're gonna find our upload and click on it and you're gonna know that you clicked on it when you see it right here and then press add to canvas. So now we have something that looks like this versus what we originally had was this right here, right? now you could come over here because this is a print then cut image you can insert a shape and a square and what you could do is like we can make this bigger because this is completely connected right we can select the name and that new square that we have and press slice deleting everything we don't want and now we have one individual a right here now, the problem with this is because the letters were kind of small, although it did fill up our screen, it still was kind of small. If we were to wanna to make this really big, this is an eight inch letter, right? And if we were to print this, do you see how it's kind of pixelated in certain areas? It's because our original screenshot of our letter wasn't very big. So while this was super quick and easy, I would not suggest doing it this way. Going back over into Inkscape, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to only focus in on that A. I'm gonna zoom in really close to that A. We wanna make sure and fill up just one letter at a time, fill up our screen. Okay, that's about as big as what I'm gonna be able to get it, but that's still a lot larger than what we originally had. Doing the same step, we want to take a screenshot and we're going to just draw a box around the A that we're wanting or that letter that we're wanting. Now, again, time consuming, right? But it's going to give you the best clip art possible for the future. So I'm gonna go over here into upload, upload image, and dragging in just that one letter I took a screenshot of. Now I'm gonna go into complex, press continue, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna do the remove background. I'm gonna come down here to more options and I'm gonna bump up my threshold. And then I'm gonna come over here and just with that little aiming thing, I'm going to click on the things I do not want. Okay, now making sure that it's going to look and cut the way that I want to. I'm gonna come over here into preview cut and it looks like there's something small right here in the corner. So I'm gonna come over here into the erase tool and I'm just going to tap that away. And now it's gone. So I'm gonna press apply and continue. I am going to do just the A, I want it to be a print then cut and I'm gonna rename this and then press upload. Okay, I'm gonna click on the A and I'm gonna press add to canvas. Okay, so you see this one right here. This one loaded up at nine inches. This one is, let's just make it an apples to apples. We'll do nine inches for the one and nine inches for the other one. Both of these are nine inches. And you tell me, which one would you rather see? For your finished pr product, which one would you rather see? I'm assuming it's going to be the one with the crisper lines. Now, this is the way that I would do it. 
Is it more time consuming? It sure is, but you're going to have a finished product at the end that's going to look amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna delete everything that I don't need, keeping this one right here. It's a little bit too big for my print thin cut area, so we can just make this a little bit smaller so it'll fit in our print thin cut, and then we can just press make it. I'm not gonna cut this out because I don't really have anything to do with a Spider-Man A for right now, but just to show you, this is exactly how it's going to print. And then it's going to wanna cut out the entire letter just like you saw in the grayed out version. But now our print thin cut is a cute Spider-Man letter. All right, I need to know if I am the only crafter that has no idea about colorful fonts until today. I mean, I, I need to know that. So let me know in the comments of the video. I sure hope I inspired you to create and I will see you later.